Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Salt, and today I'm going to teach you how to play Spin Circus, a roll and write game for two to five players, plays in about 20 minutes. So the story is that the carnival is in town, um, and it has a lot of uh, rides, and it even has a circus, but the uh, circus performers forgot their tent. And so it's our job to put up that tent, which is represented by our spinner. So the goal of the game is to get the most tickets between all players. So at the end of the game, players are going to score points for tickets that they've crossed off in this section, totaled here. They're going to score points for uh, two scoring cards revealed at the beginning of the game. I'm using the recommended starting um, goals, which you can see have a star in the corner. Um, and those will give ticket values to the prizes that we have cotton candy, fish, and teddy bears. Um, and then if you have some tokens left over at the end of the game, every three that you haven't used um, will get you a ticket. Um, and you can see here that we even start with uh, one token to begin. So our two scoring cards show us the main ways that we're going to score. Um, so this one is earn seven tickets for each prize you have the most of and four tickets if you have the second most and ties are friendly. So that just means if I have the most cotton candy at the end of the game of all players, that I'll get seven tickets for that, um, for example. Or if I have the second most, I get four. The next one is each set of bear fish and cotton candy is worth eight tickets. So if I want to go for this, I have to go for um, a little bit of everything. Okay, And those are the two recommended starting ones. Also, I've set up my spinner with three prize sections already. You'll see one of each um, almost equidistant apart. It doesn't quite work exactly, but it's pretty close. And once you get used to the game a little bit, you can use some different scoring cards and you can have some control over how your spinner starts. But for the first game, this is what we're gonna do. So every player will need a sheet like this with a spinner, a reference card, um, six dice, Every player doesn't need six dice, you can share six dice. And uh, a pen, I'm using some markers, but if you don't have markers, a pen or pencil will work just fine. Um, but I like the color, so I'm using some markers. All right, so the turn order is basically whoever's the active player, the first player, uh, that's the person who last went to the circus, or you can pick randomly if you want, takes all six dice and rolls them. Then, if you'd like to, you can spend a token by crossing it off. And like I said, we start with one, shown by the circle, to re-roll any or all the dice you want to. I don't think I will do that in this case, um, since it's the very first turn, and this is an okay roll anyway. But if you want to, it's there. So the active player, in this case me, is going to take all the dice of one value. So I could choose two sixes, one three, one five, or two ones. And what I take will give me uh, choices on what to add to my spinner, which right now is mostly blank. So if I take ones, for instance, these two ones, then I'll get to add a teddy bear piece to my spinner. I don't have any twos, so I can't add goldfish. I could take a the single three for cotton candy. I don't have any fours, but it would let me sort of earn rewards from the back of the spinner. Um, five, I could take a single five and earn something that's next to that. Uh, or sixes will double what else I get. And with any die value, I can add a two token section to my spinner. So I think in this case, I will take the two sixes um, to see if I can get some doubling. So those sixes show me what I add to my spinner, um, but they and the number of dice that I've taken, in this case two, is the size of the piece that I'm allowed to add to my spinner. So when I'm adding to my spinner, I'm going to add a times two section for that six, and I'm gonna make it two sections wide because I took two dice. Uh, and I can put it anywhere on my spinner. I can put it in the inner ring or the outer ring. Um, I just can't do both. So I couldn't spread those two sections here and here. You wouldn't wanna do that anyway for reasons that you'll see in a second, um, but it has to be in the inner ring or the outer ring. So I think for this one, knowing that I have to get a little bit of everything, um, but I want to try and get the most of something, I'm going to add this section next to the fish. And I'm going to add it on the inside. Cool. And you'll have to excuse my bad drawing or writing. So now uh, that's important because if that spinner ends up landing on that space, I'm going to get the reward from the inner circle and the outer circle. 
Uh, and since it's doubled, this means if this landed here on this fish, I know that's a little hard to see, I would get two fish instead of just one. So that's my turn as the active player. I take all the dice of one number, add a piece to my spinner anywhere that I would like. Then all the other players can, but don't have to, add a piece the same way using these dice. And they don't take them away like I have. Um, all the other players could use the same dice. So the other players may choose, maybe they'll add a two teddy bear spot to get that. They could add, like I said, that single cotton candy space or that adjacent reward space. Um, and then once all players have, once the active player has added a piece, uh, and they must do that, and the other players have chosen whether or not they'd like to add one and added it or not, um, this early in the game you'd probably choose to add one. But once everybody has added a piece to their spinner or chosen not to, all the players spin the spinner. And wherever it lands, you get that reward. So you'll see in this case, my spinner didn't land on anything. But thankfully, if you spin nothing, you get a token. So I would circle that token to show that I could use it for a reroll, like we talked about earlier. There's also a reminder of that here. Um, but you can also use tokens to go on rides. So up here we have four different rides that will give you a special ability for the rest of the game. So for example, the carousel is whenever you earn a ticket in this section, you'll earn an extra ticket. Uh, so that can be really powerful and it costs three tokens. For four tokens, you can go on the bumper cars, which lets you change one of the dice, um, plus or minus one on your turn um, whether you're the active player or not, just when you're adding a piece to your spinner, I shouldn't say on your turn. And you could even turn a six into a one with that and vice versa. The roller coaster is that uh, if you don't like your spin results, like right there, maybe I didn't like that because I just got a token, I can spin five, uh, five tokens once, and then any time I spin and don't like the results, I can spin again and take those results instead. The fun house is also five tokens, uh, and it says whenever I earn tokens, I also earn a ticket. Um, and so that can be good if you end up landing on nothing, that can also get you a ticket. Um, but it can also be good, like I said, if you used any die value before to add a two token section. Um, so that can be a way to get a lot of token incomes. You'll also notice that if I get to certain places on the uh, each of the tracks, so if I earned a prize, like let's say my spinner had ended up like this, pointing to that teddy bear, I would cross off one of these teddy bears to show that I have it, and that will count for those sets and having the most on our two scoring cards. But if I manage to get to the fourth teddy bear, I'll also earn a ticket which could be an extra ticket if I use the carousel, for instance. Um, and every three goldfish will earn me one, and every two cotton candy. Um, and you'll notice some of those get denser at the end. Also, every five tokens will earn you a ticket. So there's a little bit of combination building there. Um, and then each of the prizes also has a special reward that goes along with it if you make it pretty far down on the track. So for example, the teddy bear, if you cross off the sixth teddy bear, you can immediately add a piece to your spinner of any size up to six, since that's our number of dice, uh, and of any type that you would like to. The goldfish lets you uh, cross off a ride for its special ability um, at no cost, so for no tokens, and the cotton candy just gets you a flat five tickets if you make it all the way to the end. So essentially players are gonna keep playing like that um, until one player has filled up their spinner entirely, and then um, that that will they'll, you'll finish that round. So if the when the active player, assuming the active player filled it up, it doesn't have to be. Maybe they take this uh, and fill up their whole spinner. Then all the other players can still add a piece. You'll still spin again since that's the end of the round, and um, you'll total your scores based on the scoring cards, the number of tickets you crossed off, and any three um, tokens that you haven't used. So just remember that basic round structure, active player rolls the dice, has to add something, other players can't add, then everybody spins, gets rewards, and the next player in clockwise order becomes uh, the active player. So I'll show you one more sort of example turn as the active player, um, just so you can kind of see what you've got there. So I would roll all the dice, Maybe I will choose, maybe I'll choose these fours to take out 
And if I look at my reference card, four would let me earn the rewards at the back of the spinner. So in this case, maybe if my uh, if it was like this and I had that back of the spinner reward here, I would also end up earning that teddy bear since it's on the back. But I think I'd rather get some tokens and try and work toward that ride since I can use any value dice to do that. So I'm going to take these two fours, but instead of writing the number four, I'm going to write a two token section. And it still is going to be two sections wide because that's the number of dice that I took. So maybe I will put that here in hopes of making use of that times two that I put earlier. And that is how you play Spin Circus. Thanks for watching.